Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to review a disc that none of you guys have heard of before. It's called the Time Lapse by Simon Lazat. Let's go. All right, I know you guys have all been talking about this disc. It's been around for a while. It's a super hot driver from Simon Lazat made by Axiom Discs. The numbers are 12, five, negative one, three. So it's basically a destroyer. Now what MVP was working on, was working on getting a dome on MVP discs, which if you know MVP, a lot of their discs are not domey, but this one is pretty domey. In fact, I have a nice domey destroyer right here. Put them side by side. You can see that they're almost identical. It's got a nice dome to it. Not super flexible, but it does have the dome. Whereas the destroyer here is a little bit more flexible probably has a lot to do with the technology that they have here makes it a little stiffer but we're going to kind of go head to head with a destroyer and a time lap all right when i first touched it it did feel kind of deeper than a destroyer but then once i compared the two rims they are almost identical as far as the depth i don't know why it felt a little deep i think it's because the rim's a little stiffer because you got two types of plastic going on here, but it does feel okay in the hand. Feels a little, little bit chunky, but let's see how it flies. All right, threw that one kind of low, but that's not as beefcakey as I thought it was gonna be. All right, brand new destroyer, star plastic. Let's see how this flies in comparison. All right, very similar. Got a little bit better pull on that one. All right, now I've got a shot under my belt. Let's see if I can get it up in the air a little bit more. All right, here we go. Neutron plastic, time lapse. All right. All right, I'd say that basically flies like a destroyer for me. Don't get a lot of flex from it. All right, speaking of destroyers, here we go. There you go. Bet those are almost in identical spot. Let's see how far that was. Okay, so with almost no flex at all, just basically dead straight and then dumping hyzer, these both went about the same distance for me, about 340, 350 feet, which is another reason why I don't really prefer throwing 12 speed discs unless it's got more turn. With my arm speed, I like to have something that'll flip a little bit more, give me some extra flex out of it. But in a headwind, let's see how it behaves. We've got a little bit of a head, kind of crosswind. So let's see what these do in that. Right, I'm gonna give it a little bit of an Anheuser. Little Annie, all right. And a good dump. There we go, a little Anheuser and then get a flex out of it. There we go. All right, so for my arm speed, that's about the best way to get some distance with a disc like this. Got to ride it a little bit on an Anheuser. Trust that it will come back until these break in and give you the nice flip up. But yeah, let's go. I'm going to pace this one off and see how far this went. All right, after measuring those throws, Time lapse went about 325 again, just like my first throw. This destroyer, I was able to flex it out to about 390. So definitely a big difference between the two. Uh, biggest difference I'm noticing is that the destroyer, since it's one mold, one piece, it definitely has more give to it. It's more flexible. And with it being domey like that, you get almost a little bit of a pop top, not super much, but I'm not sure how the flexibility plays into how far a disc can fly, but I feel like I'm able to get this out a little bit more, whereas this, it's just super stiff. I mean, you have two pieces that go together and they had to somehow manufacture the dome into it too. It just feels chunkier and thicker and it doesn't have much give to it. I mean, it's very stiff. All right, let's throw these some more. Okay, this time I'm gonna try to put a little bit more Anheuser on these. See if I can get some distance out of this time lapse. Oh, really laid that over and it just dropped. Let's try the same thing with Destroyer. Yeah, that just wants to stay in the air a little bit more. 
Nice skip. Yeah, I'd say the Destroyer's got a little bit more glide to it. I know Simon Line says it's a five glide, but that puppy got down to the ground quick. So whenever I get a disc that's like a 12 speed or faster, I feel like I'm really the wrong person to be doing a disc review on it because I feel like these discs are definitely not made for my arm speed. I primarily like to stay in the 10 speed or less. I do like an Animus, which is 11 speed, which is like a Wraith, but I don't really like to go much more than that unless I do need a beefcake of a disc, something overstable that I need to get the flare skip. But I know there's a lot of you guys out there that are just like me, have similar arm speeds. So I think it does help for me to review discs like this to let you know if this is a worthwhile disc or not. Those last throws I just did were about the same result. This one went about 75 feet further than the time lapse. That's kind of been the common thread throughout most of these throws I've been doing. Hey, just to let you know, picked up this Star Factory Second Destroyer for four bucks when they did one of their flash sales with Innova. So you guys keep an eye out for those because man, this puppy's flying pretty good. All right, I'm gonna do one more throw with both of these, give you my two cents, and then let's wrap this up. Hey, if you guys are looking for discs, head on over to Disc Golf Deals USA. Use my code, you guys can save some money. Last I checked, they still had some Gyra Palooza boxes too, which are pretty sweet. I just got mine this past weekend, and I'm gonna throw some discs out of that in the next couple videos. Here we go, one last throw. Okay, got some better turn on that, some good finish. All right, that was probably my that was probably my best throw with that disc so far. Yeah, that wind's helping me. Big flex. That's what I'd like to see out of a 12-speed disc for my arm speed. The ability to get it to turn and kind of hold that turn, have a light finish at the end. That lets me know once I beat this in a little bit, it might actually turn into a flip-up hyzer disc which is super money. All right, guys, for my money, I mean, you can't go wrong with $4 Destroyer. This thing bombed. That last throw, yet again, this was about 375. This was about 325 or maybe even 310. The max I was getting with this was probably about 325. It just does not want to flex a whole lot for me. And then once it comes out of the flex, just kind of drops. Doesn't give me a lot of glide. My arm speed is not Simon's which I know that. So a disc that's designed for Simon and his arm speed, doesn't surprise me that it doesn't really fly like that for me. For my arm speed, I'd take a destroyer like this any day with a nice dome to it, maybe even a lighter weight one. This one is about a 172. I'd even take like a 168, 169 gram destroyer. I could get this to flex out or better yet, go with an Animus or a Wraith type disc. I can get a lot more distance, push it out to 400 and beyond with that type of disc. But anyway, these are pretty cool discs. They're definitely gonna be collector's items. So I know a lot of you guys wanna go out there and collect these. So I'd say if you're around my arm speed or even a slower arm speed, get one of these, put it on your shelf, collect it, save it, don't throw it, and then go over and see if you can get yourself a $4 destroyer whenever they pop up or Better yet, Thought Space Athletics Animus. It's a great disc, especially in Aura Plastic. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Until I see you next time, peace.